All right, how's it going everyone? This is Jose Trujillo once again coming to you from the art studio. I hope you guys can see this. I haven't, I haven't uh, done a live one in a couple of days, so I wanted to get it going. So here we go. This is an 11 by 14 inches canvas board. So as my painting style goes, it's very direct. So we're going to do a uh, uh, still life. <laughs> Sorry about the waiting there. So it, this is very, uh, very direct, right? As you, many of you know that I paint like this. But it's 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 also it also helps to get you uh, out of the same you know um, if if you don't paint like this right doesn't matter how you paint um, I found and and I have to convince myself over and over too because <laughs> sometimes I'll get in, in ruts but I have to uh, I found myself for myself I found that that painting in this direct form. And what I mean direct is that it's it's very intuitive. That's what I mean. There's no measuring. I don't have a little color measuring system. Or I don't have a, uh, you know, I don't go like this with a brush, you know, sort of to look at. This is very, uh, it's very simple. And for me, it's very, very, it, it's just very effective. Let's do another little one over here. Where this one will be holding a flower or two. So, something like that. Okay, let's call this a steel life. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, post them in the comments below. If not, totally cool. Um, let's get ready to rumble. So for me, this has been a a learning thing for me, uh, painting like this, because for years I was convinced that this was not the way to paint. And I was convinced not by me, but by other people. So I kind of uh, went back and forth with it, because, you know, when when you are not very sure of yourself, what ends up happening is that other people make the decision for you. So, um, a little, uh, what is what would that be called? Just a little heads up for you out there. <laughs> Getting ready in your, in your art journey. Make sure that you make the decisions. Even if it looks, uh, um, wrong, quote unquote, right? It doesn't matter. Make sure that you make those decisions. So I base this style of painting on, on years of practice that I've uh, developed and also paying attention to a lot of the, um, um, what would you call it, master painters. Uh, they talk a lot about um, being direct. And they said it in different ways, maybe not specifically being direct with those words. I like to call it that, but... As I mentioned before, many of the masters, the master painters, were very uh, um, observant. Uh, I don't know if that's even a word. I like to make up words. I'm like, I like Monet. I, I, I found out that Monet likes, like, used to like to make up words. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a word or not, but let's go with it. They used to observe a lot, right? Um, I think that's how one becomes uh, more in tune, you know, um, a musician does a whole lot more, in my opinion, a whole lot more listening than playing. Um, he, I mean, he or she does a lot of playing, a, a, a lot of practicing, 
but I believe that they do a lot more listening. When they get good, they, they become, they do just as much as listening, if not more. Because uh, listening is, is a very important factor. And in painting, uh, seeing, just like in sculpting, I've, I've, I've heard, I don't know, I'm not a sculptor, uh, feeling in sculpting. If you're doing um, any type of sculpting or working with your with your hands directly, like a potter, you know, if you're, if you're on the wheel doing pottery, I've heard, I don't know, I've heard from very proficient uh, people that it becomes a thing about feeling, it's a feel. After a while, after, for, after a few years, it becomes about feeling. And I would agree with that a thousand percent without knowing anything about pottery. <laughs> Just because I know in my, in my own experience, uh, it's, it, you really have to go beyond uh, what everybody else says art needs to look like. And it's difficult because we all want to paint pretty pictures. You know, we all want to be told that what we do is nice. So it's difficult. It's it's not it's not it's not for the well they say it's not for the faint of heart. Being a painter is a I think it's it's a very bold thing, especially if you are a not a realist painter. Um, it doesn't mean you know how to do. I I I've done my fair share of realist work, but it's not what I do. Mine is more intuitive, more uh, abstract. But, but it's a difficult, you know, it can be a difficult thing to, to, to undertake because, because um, most of us want to be told, right? I love what you do. And not, and not many people can say that about um, abstraction, and the more abstract you get, uh, likely the more the less people will tell you, right, that what you do is outstanding, or they love it, or maybe they will, they will, but it's like your grandma or your, your mom or <laughs> your spouse being supported. <laughs> it's uh, who said that? I I heard uh, Wolf Kahn, the the painter, the the uh, abstract landscape artists. He said that about landscape painters, but I think about any any painter. He said it was a uh, something along what I'm saying, sort of a difficult endeavor. You know, it's it's very bold if you want to be a a, a painter, and for that reason, right? Because the the more abstract, if you're a photographer, you can get abstract too, but but photography, we for the most part, we understand the, the visual, you know. But if you're a painter, or you know, or you sculpt, and the more abstract you go, the more you have to be okay with people not being all into uh, <laughs> into your work, you know. Not everybody. I mean, even even if you do. Um, realist work it doesn't matter it's, th it's still the same but but I feel like with abstract work we we tend to to kind of um, have to develop a, a thicker skin I guess so it's I, I I take my hat to you abstract painters out there because I know that and I mean and this this of course is it's not you know abstraction like what we know to be abstraction nowadays, right? You can call this, uh, I don't know, Faubus post-impressionist. You know, some people even like to call it impressionist. Um, not quite, but, but in, in those lines. So, it's pretty much like that.
So if you have any, any questions again, um, please please let me know. I I love to to uh, get your 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 uh, questions or your comments. This really uh, that's the whole point of this, right? I, I I could be doing this without recording it, but I like to share the process. I think it's pretty awesome to be able to to go into the process of painting and I call it the dance, yeah, this type of painting, any type of painting but I feel like the, the more you know it's, it's sort of like you're a conductor, yeah, it's sort of like a dance, a little con you know you're, you're, you're uh, guiding I like to think of it as, as I'm painting, but I'm not. You know, it's a strange concept that I started realizing the more I painted. You, you, you're painting, but you're really not painting. So, so which one is it? No, who's painting? Well, it's not like I'm talking about split personalities or anything like that. So, <laughs> that's not what I mean. Uh, your your intuitive uh, mind, I guess, if you could call it that. I don't know. Um, I like to call it the the, the intelligence, the, the true intelligence in you is painting, not the uh, not the. Uh, um, when I paint something more realistic, right? If I start diving into realism, some of you have seen. I just posted a a drawing, a charcoal drawing of of a head of a. A saint, it could be Jesus, I don't know. Um, when I do that, uh, of course, not only I, I don't go as fast, because that's not the, the point there, right? The point is to create a likeness, so I kind of have to slow down. But, uh, but when I do that, I realize that I'm using more my, my analytical mind, I guess. You know? And here, it's not that it's funnier. I, I have I have tremendous fun doing realistic work, but here I, I feel like I get to touch on something that I don't that it's not that is beyond me, and that's why I keep going back to it, you know, to this sort of uh, something that is uh, it unfolds. I think if I could put it that way, the more I do it, the more it unfolds. Where, where a painting that you're trying to do realistic, you start playing by certain rules. There are certain rules, very, very strict rules, some of them, some of them not, but some of them very strict rules that are, that are there since the, you know, since the beginning of time, <laughs> especially for the past uh, century or so, uh, you know, that have to do with tone, that have to do with, um, Many things, composition, many things. And it's not difficult, it's not complicated, but you do have to obey those rules if you want realism to, to come out. You know? Here the rules don't don't they, they apply but they're not as pronounced. You know. I leave out information. And the reason I like to leave out information is because I understand that the mind is extremely powerful. And what we do is that we end up uh, Finishing that information on our own, and that's what makes you know. That's what makes it, um, in my mind, that's what makes it so uh, interesting and compelling. Right? Because it's like, what, what, what was this about? What, what are you putting Viridian Green there? You know, and we're sort of trying to piece it together. The mind is trying to is racing, trying to piece it together. Because the mind loves understanding things. When we don't understand something, we start with bananas. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that. My name is Jose Trujillo. I am an artist. And this has been a treat. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's a great question, Mary. <laughs> do paintings have to make sense or do we make sense of them? I, I think I think you're onto something there. <laughs> so
So here it is. I know the background is, is it can be lost in the background, but, but, uh, but we can see beyond that. <laughs> There's my palette. Very messy. I love it messy. Uh, I use a big, big palette. My, my, my table's, uh, four inches, four inches, four feet long, two by four feet. So I, I get to, I don't like the little, 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 you know, little palettes because I, 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 I used to use little palettes when I used to do portrait painting and, and realistic stuff. And I started painting bigger and I started going wide, you know, and I use a lot of colors. There's, I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through some of the colors that I use. This is, uh, right here, this is, a uh, I believe is a soft. Sometimes I use titanium, sometimes I use soft, soft white. That is a phthalo, phthalo blue. This is a viridian. You can also use, instead of using viridian, you can also use phthalo green. This is a pale yellow. Cadmium, I love cadmiums. This is a cadmium red. Right there it's supposed to be burnt sienna. But when I run out of it, I love to mix. Uh, oh, <laughs> walnut oil is the way to go. <laughs> awesome. I only use walnut oil. There's my little walnut oil uh, tub. But, uh, here, let me show you. Sorry for the shakiness, guys. This is the walnut oil that I buy. I buy the big one. But just because I I play with it a lot. So, And this is purple, dioxazine purple. This is magenta. Sometimes I use black. I, I didn't use to use black because I was following the impressionist palette for a long time. But, uh, and sometimes I use cream center. But uh, I don't stick to, to a single palette. I, I think that I've been stuck with a, this palette because it's comfortable, not because <laughs> it's the way to go. I don't really mind. So I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And until next time, all right? <laughs> At the grocery store. You know what? I think it's definitely worth a try because when they were selling me uh, at the art store, when they were selling me this Walmart oil, uh, the guy that was selling it to me told me, you know, the bender came by and he used it on a salad. So I assume it's just, uh, it's the same. Go ahead and try it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, just stick with it without trying it. Go ahead and try it and, and see. Let me know because I might just go buy mine from the, from the grocery store too. I'm going to try it and I'm going to make a video on it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.